evening to all of you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Parit Gokda, for our extensive uh, coverage. And also, you have given the judgment about the nail and the plate options. So, my talk is going to focus on uh, retrograde nail. Because recently, because of the invention of uh, locking plate, it has been like an extensively used and nails are slowly, the usage has come down. Now we are uh, in a way to promote the retrograde nail is also a better option and it has to be a uh, permanent member of our armatory. So this is an example of a young adult following a high energy injuries. You can see a C2 type of a distal femur with an articular comminution, extensive metaphyseal and uh, diaphyseal comminution. So the treatment options are many, as you told about the starting from uh, condylar buttress plate to the DCS to the uh, distal femoral locking plate. And as you see, the options are uh, many in these situations. But uh, this was the procedure done. So as you can see, it is using uh, as a bridge fixator. And the plate was uh, a 13 hole plate. As the principles of uh, locking plate are commonly used are, you have to measure the length of the comminution and the plate has to be three times longer. So in the screw density is 0.5, it is the principle of a locking plate. Here you can see the, even though the reduction looks satisfactory, but the principles of uh, locking plate are a uh, bit inadequate because of uh, short segment uh, proximal fixation. As you expected in the early post-operative period itself, there is a bending of the plate because the principles of uh, locking plate are not uh, followed enough in the form of uh, spanning the plate and screw density. If we take a similar kind of uh, distal femur fracture in an adult, a similar type of an um, C2 distal femur, there's an articular combination with an extensive metaphyseal and diaphyseal combinations. So in this injury, so we have done an uh, inter, uh, retrograde nail, Initially, an articular fixation with the condylar screw and then uh, following retrograde nail. At the end of uh, three years, she had a good functional outcome. The fixation was biological and early knee range of motion was started and patient had an uneventful outcome. So when the principles are followed in good enough, both nail or plate are going to give a better result. So as you all see, locking plates are uh, most commonly used in the recent times. Of course, there are a good outcome in uh, many situations when the principles of locking plate are uh, followed in justice. So there are uh, many articles regarding the pitfalls and problems of uh, locking plate. There are re-operation rates that are up to 20% and implant failures in the form of uh, loosening of screws or breakage of plates are common up to 7 to 10%. So locking plates have got a uh, very good advantage of it is a ease of application, user-friendly implant. And it has got a multiple points of fixation of the distal femur. In the retrograde nail, the option of multiple points are lacking, but the newer implants are evolving. As it has been mentioned, it is acting as a bridge fixator and the internal external fixator. It spans the fracture, it improves the working length, and it allows an early callus formation. And followed by weight bearing, gives a good uneventful results. But the disadvantages of locking plate it is not good for uh, middle comminution and void, as been mentioned by Dr. Farid Kakta. Hence, when you wait bear early when the principles are not followed, it might cause a problem in the form of an implant failure or non-union. As you all know, locking plate is a load-bearing device. Hence, there are complications like uh, plate bending and screw loosening and non-unions are common. In contrast to the plate, retrograde nails have a better advantage of it is a load-sharing device. So, it maintains the both the length, rotation, axis of the affected lower limb when it has been done in a principal manner and also the reaming has got a positive effect on callus formation. So the endosial reaming has a positive effect on callus formation which is much uh, predominantly seen on the medial side. However, there are disadvantages of uh, retrograde nail also. Because of uh, minimal locking screws, there are insufficient articular fixations uh, is the problem which might require an augmentation in the form of uh, missing the nail. We have to put a cancer screw in the anterior posterior thing or you have to use a special interlocking nail with the multiple locking options. Since it involves the intraarticular thing, the chance of uh, knee stiffness is also common. 
when the nails are not uh, properly inserted the techniques have been not followed properly there is a chance for uh, mal reduction when the screws break the nail might protrude into the joint and in some situation there may be a breakage of the nail at the hole or in special situations uh, as parit cock has already told it needs a buttressing plate either on the medial or lateral side in presence of a circumferential comminution in the metaphyse and diaphyse ligaments so here is an example of an uh, a3 type of a supracondylar femur with an intact distal femur and a medial comminution the procedure would be following a radiolucent table and a bump under the buttock and the triangular pillow or bolster is very important depending upon the thigh girth you can use the uh, bolster or a triangular pillow to get the uh, nail entry the very important thing is screening the hip and lesser trochanter at the beginning to look for the deformities of the proximal femur as in many times there may be an external rotation of the proximal femur so you might use a steenman pin to rotate it and on the similar time you have to screen whether the hip is visible on the cm sometimes the uh, hip region might be obscured by the, uh, the radio opaque uh, table so you have to make sure the hip is properly visible so that you can at the end of the procedure or during the procedure you can make your access from the hip to the ankle where it has been uh, told previously so that we can have a good anatomical and mechanical access have been maintained the approach should be a midline approach either it's a medial or laryngeal approach is indicated depending upon the comminution when they have when you have a comminution on the medial side you can go for a medial parapetalar approach or like a swash swashbuckler approach you can go to lateral parapetalar approach so you can address the corresponding condylar comminutions first key is the reduction of the articular fragments and provisionally they can be fixed with the k weights or steenman pins once our reduction is adequate then you can go on to the entry into the nail and the nail can be inserted the entry point for the thing is 1 cm anterior to the pcl origin is the entry point where both the intercondylar sulcus it is in the center in both an ap and lateral view in an ap view that has to be centered in the metaphysis when it the guide wire is inserted and uh, the guide wire has to go along with the anatomical axis centered in the metaphysis once the guide wire is confirmed we can do the reaming reaming has got a very good positive effect here the medial butterfly fragment was reduced with the 4 point per reduction clamp and a circlage wire was uh, applied so you can see the reaming and also the regarding the nail length it has to be at the secondary level it has to cross the intercondylar sulcus and proximally the nail has to end at or above the level of lesser trochanter to prevent the stress stressing at the sub at the subtrochanteric region hence you can see the circlage wiring and the two distal locking screws are purchasing into the intact femoral condyle so patient can go on for an early weight bearing marking and also the early knee range of movements can be started in special situations like a morbidly obese female with an osteoporosis and an extra articular distal femur fractures the nail is going to work well because the exposure and also the stability of the implant is going to be much much higher when you are using a, a nail the locking plates are uh, in osteoporotic individuals are a bit high even in uh, using a locking plate you might use the the bicondylar or a plate as the farid has already told for better mobility and the fixation we run with a distal femoral nail with a spiral bed option so that the patient can have an early weight bearing walking and the range of movements can be started this is another example of a c2 distal femur fracture with a more amount of comminution you can the ct scan is also showing the fragments more on the medial side hence we did in a midline approach a medial parapetal arthrotomy was done and the provisionally the fragments are fixed with the k wires and the steenman pin then our entry was started the centered in the metaphysis in the ap view and also in the lateral view and the guide wire was inserted once the locking has been done in the proximal and distally the articular fragments can be fixed with an cancellous screw and here the the medial hoof of fragment and the anterior side was fixed with the headless compression screws and you can see the articular uh, congruity is well maintained and the post operative x ray you can see the alignment of the limb length and rotation axis were maintained and patient was uh, encouraged to do early weight bearing walking and encouraged to have a good amount of range of motion in the knee this is another example when patient who had a polytrauma with uh, multiple fractures this patient had a chest injury and also in a bilateral distal femur fracture and a head injury where the principles of uh, damage control orthopedics in the form of an uh, external fixer is applied in the initial phases then it was uh, 
plan for uh, fixation both the sides in bilateral femurs for an early weight bearing walking a nail bed concept works well because of extensive metaphyseal comminution here on the right side uh, there was a focal comminution hence we added an endless nail for an uh, structural support on the medial set and lateral support the medial spike was uh, more into the diaphysis hence a uh, nail bed concept was uh, advised and here you can see that one year follow up both the fractures have healed well as we started the early range of motion patient has got a good functional outcome there are of knee bending and also patient gained a good uh, outcome the other thing is an uh, open distal femur fractures where the uh, the metaphyseal bone loss and there is an extensive intraarticular involvement the as per the initial protocol a debridement and uh, the loose fragments were removed since in the intraarticular fragment we put a following a wound debridement we did a primary plating and the bone gap was filled with the cement spacer in the initial stage and the wound was closed primarily so in 6 weeks as there is no evidence of infection the cement spacer was removed since there is an extensive metaphyseal and diaphyseal comminution with the circumferential involvement and loss of uh, bones so we added a nail bed concept we added a tricortical uh, graft on the medial side and a nail bed concept was done on early range of movement to encourage here you can see at the end of one year patient had a good functional outcome in the form of a range of movements and also the non eventful outcome the commonly available retrograde nails are uh, the conventional nail with an uh, interlocking screws and with the, the locking bolts into the thing and multiple locking screws and a distal femoral nail with a spiral bed options and then the conventional nail with the multiple locking screws are available at present the cadaveric studies with the multiple locking screws with the locking plate has showed a conventional nail has got a longer fatigue life than the locking plate and the locking nail has got a superior uh, fatigue failure when compared with the interlocking screws so there is another study which compared all the four implants the conventional nail with the locking bolt and also the distal femoral nail and the commonly used angular staple locking plate and then the first thing the torsional stiffness were more with the angular staple locking plate but however you can see it is the the, the supracondylar nail with the multiple locking option as and parallel with the uh, angular staple locking plate for the rest of the axial stiffness cycles of fail all the things the retrograde nail with the multiple locking options have got a, a better stability than the angular staple locking plate hence this paper has concluded that the angular staple locking plate has significantly higher torsional stiffness than other construct but with the intra the retrograde nail with the four screw distal locking plate has nearby comparable lesses with the angular locking st- angular staple locking plate over the four screw locking uh, screw considered the highest axial strength followed by the plate and the other things this was uh, comparable with the human cadaveric bone and also it is similar with the synthetic bone models hence the retrograde nails with the multiple locking screw has got a biomechanical more stable than the locking plate there has been uh, many literature of uh, minimal case reports of 20 to 30 patient uh, some studies say the locking plates are more favorable and also some studies have reported that retrograde nails are more favorable but the meta analysis on comparing the larger studies the regarding the blood loss and operating time infection malunion and non union and knee stiffness and the other problems and there are no significant difference in the complications compared to the nailing and plating have been uh, quoted but they have suggested the randomized control trial also this is another study incidence of uh, non union after uh, distal femur fractures using both the contemporary fixation the nail and the plate There has been 38 cohort studies have been included, and 2,000 more than 3,000 fractures have analyzed. But they concluded that only 5% developed non-union, and there is no difference in the outcome. But they concluded that you have to master in one of them. You should know the balance between both the implants, and then whatever necessary, you have to use that type of an implant. Hence, to conclude, the intramedullary nail will have its permanent place in armamentorium because of the versatile usage. a retrograde nail works better in extraarticular and metaphyseal diaphyseal comminutions and the newer implants with multi locking screws are biomechanically superior to locking plates and in special situation you might need an augmented cancellous screws or a, a add add of locking plates in special situations like a metaphyseal diaphyseal comminutions so thank you very much for your patient listening mm-hmm.